We are back with the GCN Racing News Show. This week, heroic exploits over in Dubai, a trio of one-day races here in Europe. We're in France for the Tour de la Provence, Belgium for some more cyclocross, and finally, we're going to be in Bakersfield, California for an event called the Rock Cobbler. First though, we're going to talk about Colombia. It's about time that this nation had a stage race with international recognition. And in the Colombia Oro y Paz, it seems as though they are well on their way. The inaugural event was really a showcase of Colombian cycling, exactly where it is right now. The crowds were huge, passionate, and the location was stunning, and the riders well, there are just so many world-class Colombian cyclists right now, and seeing so many of them at that one race really hammered that point home. The first three stages were all won by Fernando Gaviria in sprints. Now, admittedly, it wasn't against the best sprinting opposition in the world, but Gaviria won with ease. And at the very least, he proved there that there were no long-lasting effects from his recent crash at the Vuelta a San Juan. When the going got tougher though, it was his quick step teammate who came to the fore, Julian Alaphilippe taking stage four and the leader's jersey in the process, but that was about as good as it got for foreign riders. Rigoberto Uran took a hugely popular win on stage five's hilltop finish, outfoxing Nara Quintana, Sergio Anau and Egan Bernal in a four up sprint for the line. However, the GC all came down to the final day, finishing up a climb to the cheap tower in Manizales. Now, as you would expect, there were fireworks as soon as they hit that final climb. Egan Bernal launched his move with three kilometers still to go, and none of his rivals were able to respond. It wasn't enough to catch Daya Quintana, who took the stage after being in the early breakaway, but it was enough to earn the 21-year-old the overall victory. Now, Bernal has long been hailed as the next big thing in Colombian cycling, with huge raw talent and a VO2 max above 90. And as he stood proud on top of the podium above Naira Quintana and Rigoberto Uran, it was glaringly obvious that we don't need any further proof of his talent. And it makes you wonder just when will a Colombian cyclist finally win the Tour de France? It's got to be on the cards now sooner rather than later, hasn't it? Let us know in the poll that you can find on the screen right now. As well as answering that, you can also let us know in the comments exactly who you think will be the first Colombian Tour de France winner. Now, this year's Dubai Tour was once again a sprinter's delight. The five-day event is a generally relaxed affair, which is contradicted a little by a hectic and chaotic final few kilometers of each stage. It was a case of first race, first win for Dylan Groenewegen of Lotto NL Jumbo on day one. The former Dutch champion fittingly took the blue, red and white jerseys of the general, points and young riders classifications respectively. Quick Steps' Elia Viviani held off a fast finishing Grunewagen on stage two, whilst the following day saw the return of Mark Cavendish of Team Dimension Data, putting a torrid 2017 behind him with his first win in almost a year. But the most exciting events came on day four. An early breakaway of six forged a lead of over six minutes in the early stages. Not a worry for the peloton under normal circumstances. But as the stage reached the closing 30 kilometers, it became very clear that they were going to have a big fight on their hands if they wanted to get the breakaway back. Now much of that was down to a 19 year old called Brandon McNulty. The breakaway group gradually shrunk in size until with about 10 kilometers to go, McNulty found himself alone in front. Now it's that position of solitude though, in which he is most comfortable because McNulty is a former junior world time trial champion and also runner up at the under 23 event just last year. His lead came down far slower than any could have predicted and if it weren't for the final wall at the finish, he would have taken a very famous and very popular victory. Unfortunately though, for him, it wasn't to be. And I think that everybody was as heartbroken as Brandon himself when he got caught with just 100 meters to go. Except, perhaps, for Sonny Colbrelli, and we should take nothing away from the eventual stage winner. The Italian found himself stuck in the big ring for the final 17% slopes to the finish line, and goodness only knows how many watts he was pushing out and averaged as he powered up to the last 200 meters to take his first victory of 2018. Our rider of the week this week, though, has to be Mr. Brandon McNulty. I mean, what a heroic effort. He was the story of the stage, and judging by that performance, he will be the story of plenty more races to come in the future. 
On to the final day, and with Elia Viviani holding a slim two-second lead over Magnus Court Nielsen, it was always going to be a tense affair, to say the very least. However, Viviani finished it off in style, avoiding a late crash and taking not only the overall victory, but also his second stage win of the week. It was an all-French affair at the Tour de la Provence. Alexander Geniez took both the opening prologue and ultimately the overall classification, making that three wins from five days of racing so far for the 29-year-old Frenchman. He finished just five seconds ahead of his aged 2 r teammate Tony Gallopin, with Rudy Mollard of FDJ rounding out the podium in third. There have also been three one-day races in Europe over the weekend. Luis Leon Sanchez of Astana turned the tables on Alejandro Valverde to take a particularly tough edition of the Vuelta a Mercia. And then over in Italy, Francesco Moser took a solo win at the Trofeo La Guelia. Now that's a race that he won as a first-year pro a few years back, and it's his first win actually for quite some time. Maybe 2018 could be the year that Moser finally lives up to expectation, because there is no doubt he's a very talented rider with some quite exceptional genes. Now, before we finish with road racing, we'd like to say a quick well done to Daryl Impey, whose start to the season really couldn't have been any better than it has. Off the back of his win at the Tour Down Under in January, he has just become national South African time trial and road race champion just this weekend gone. The elite women's event, meanwhile, was won by Carla Oberholzer. The cyclocross season still hasn't finished just yet. In fact, it was a double header at the weekend with the DVV trophy on Saturday and the Super Prestige coming on Sunday. Sanna Kant and Mathieu van der Poel both completed the clean sweep with back-to-back -back wins and it almost makes you feel even more sorry for van der Poel. He really did get it wrong on the worst possible day last weekend, didn't he? The Super Prestige series will conclude this coming weekend. And finally, time for something a little bit different. Now, when we started this racing news show, I did mention that it wouldn't just be confined to top-level professional racing and that we wanted to draw some attention to some of the quirkier and slightly different events that take place each and every year. And the first of those is the Rock Cobbler. Saturday saw the fifth annual event take place in Bakersfield over in California. They described the event as a super hard ride bordering on a race. Uh, the 90 plus miles and 6,800 feet of climb include all types of terrain, and incredibly, at one point, you even ride through somebody's back garden where they have built a bespoke cobbled section. How cool is that? Now, there are no specified prizes to the winners of the male, female, and tandem categories. However, the first back are the first to get their hands on the beer, which is provided by a local brewery. So that is an incentive to go fast, if ever there was one. Now, if you know of an event that you would like us to cover here on a GCN Racing News Show, then please let us know about that event in the comment section, which you can find just below this video. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with loads more action. Uh, we are coming in from Oman, Algarve, Andalusia, and the Tour de Haute-Var in France. We will see you again then. For now, though, if you've not seen our bucket list ride from the beautiful Spanish island of Gran Canaria, you can find that by clicking just down here. And if you've enjoyed this show, give us a thumbs up.